Welcome, and thanks for your interest in Komatsu products. Today we're going to cover how to properly conduct a pre-operation inspection on Komatsu's mid-size wheel loader. Now the reason we do these inspections is to quickly look over the machine for any wear, damage, or leaks. Getting in the habit of doing these regularly will go a long way towards maximizing both productivity and the longevity of the machine. And anything we cover today is also going to be included in the operation and maintenance manual inside the cab. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So as we approach the machine, the first thing we want to do is take a look inside the cab and make sure there's nobody inside and then ensure that the machine is chalked properly against movement. From here we can begin the inspection with our bucket, going ahead and checking the wear on the cutting edges, inspecting our bolts, making sure they're all in place, and then visually inspecting the bucket structure itself for any damage. So we'll move around the machine, just be sure to do the same visual inspection on the back side of the bucket as well. From here we like to start at the top and work our way down as we get into the work equipment. So we'll actually take a look at the cab, take a look at the lights, work down to the boom and the linkage, inspect our cylinder and our hydraulic lines, make sure there's no signs of leaks. Then we want to take a look at our mounting points, inspecting the bolts to make sure they're all in place and that everything seems to be receiving the proper amount of lubrication. From this position too, it's a good opportunity to take a look underneath the machine to see if you notice any leaks. So if everything checks out here, we can go ahead and move on to our tire and wheel inspection. Now this inspection will be the same thing that we'll do on each of the four tires. Visually, you want to take a look at both the inner and the outer sides of both the wheel and the tire to make sure you don't see any signs of damage. You want to take a look at your wheel hardware, inspect the bolts to make sure they're all in place and they all appear to be tightened properly. From here, you want to check all the fenders and all of the mounting spots and also your light. Once we're complete with that, we can go ahead and work our way into the articulation area. First thing we're going to do is look underneath the machine to make sure we don't see any signs of leaks. From there, we'll go ahead and inspect the drive line, all of our hydraulic hoses, and then our articulation joint components. And then there's one fluid level check that we can do while we're in here for the transmission oil. Now we can move on to do a visual inspection of our access points. Also take a look at our air filter, making sure all the latches are in place. This is also the location of the air restriction gauge. And you also want to make sure you have adequate levels of windshield wiper fluid. From here we can move on to perform the same tire inspection and wheel inspection that we just performed on the front side of the machine. Also want to take a look at our fender and our fender mounting points. From here we can move on to the battery box. What I want to do here is just a basic visual inspection, make sure the mounting hardware is in place and there's no signs of damage or any corrosion. So after the battery inspection, we're going to go ahead and swing open the fender and go ahead and open up the engine compartment. Now all we're going to do here is just a visual inspection. We want to check all the lines, make sure we don't see any signs of leaks, any damage or any buildup of debris. If everything looks okay here, you can go ahead and shut this. So now we can start working our way around to the back side of the machine. What we want to do is take a couple steps back and then start at the top and work our way down. So we want to look at the back side of the cab, take a look at the handrails, our backup camera, and our tail lights. It's also a good opportunity again, take a look underneath the machine to see if you see any leaks. If everything looks good there, go ahead and open up the access point to our radiators and cooling fan. We want to do a visual inspection of the lines all the blades, make sure that there's no signs of damage or any leaks. From here you can pop open the fan, take a look at your radiator. Just want to take a look at the core, make sure that there's no buildup of any debris or any kind of damage in there. So as we continue to work our way around the machine, work our way to the second battery box where we'll perform the same inspection that we performed on the other side of the machine. I do want to point out this is also the location of the main battery disconnect switch. It's also the location of your fuel fill spot. These machines utilize ultra low sulfur diesel. So after you finish with the batteries, go ahead and swing open the fender. And open up the engine compartment where we can conduct the remainder of our engine inspection. First thing we'll do is take a look at our coolers, inspect our lines and our belts for any damage, make sure that we don't see any signs of leaks. You want to take a look at your fuel pre-filter and your sediment bowl, make sure there's no signs of contamination. Got the location of your engine oil dipstick. And finally, you got the location of the fuel tank sediment drain located just on the front side of the fuel tank. So after we finish with the engine inspection, 
and go ahead and start working our way to the front side of the machine, making sure to do the same tire and wheel inspections that we performed on the other side for both the rear and the front tire. You also want to check your mounting points for your light and your fenders. Got a couple fluid level checks that we can do on this side of the machine. The first one would be for your engine coolant. And you also have the location of the hydraulic oil sight glass to make sure that you have adequate levels of hydraulic oil. Now we can do a visual inspection of our secondary access point, making sure everything's okay here. And then you got the location of the DEF fill spot and sight tube, so you can make sure that you got adequate levels of DEF. And while we're here, it's a good opportunity to go ahead and perform the same inspection that we performed on the other side of the machine for our articulation area. If everything looks good there, we'll go ahead and take a step back, look at our cab, our handrails and our mirrors, making sure that we don't see any signs of damage. Then from here, we want to perform the same inspection of our work equipment, our boom, our cylinders, our linkage, and our bucket as we did on the other side of the machine. If everything checks out here, that would conclude the pre-operation inspection and we could start working our way to the cab.